Hello and welcome to the Three Crosses Wood Carving video blogs. Well, today I'm going to talk about several things. I'm going to kind of expound a little bit more on uh, uh, trying new things and how we actually uh, progress as carvers. And y'all, if you noticed the written post I did last week, I showed some pictures of the carvings that I've started on uh, this month. And I'm going to show you one little guy right here. This is my red beard pirate. And you'll notice he's uh, he's colored now. The hat and the skin and actually the beard were all done with the tinted Danish oil. And then to get the right color, I came back. I want to show him a little bit closer. I came back and I uh, used a little bit of acrylic paint watered down just to get the right kind of color that I wanted. You'll notice that the beard has got a lot of depth to it. It's got a lot of flow to it. I'm trying a new curly mustache, although I wish I'd have made it a little thicker, put a little more depth in there. One of the things I'm running into, carving off the corner on these two inch blocks, is I really don't have quite enough depth. I'm gonna have to probably start out with a, a, a bigger block, maybe two and a half inches across the back so that I can get enough depth. Uh, another one, if you look at the pictures before, it, that I'm working on is an Indian. And you notice him, oh, he's mean looking. He's got a sneer on his face. I kind of raise that lip a little bit. And I'm liking the way he's going to look. Now, I hadn't finished him yet. I hadn't started on the hair. Uh, I'm planning on doing a brooch or a roach up there. And I've got to look at some pictures because I've not done one like that. But here again, I'm trying new things. Uh, so that I can improve as a carver and we all need to do that if you're not improving as a carver you're probably backing up don't be afraid to try new things don't be afraid to fail if for some reason it doesn't work out well just recarve it throw it away start again remember it's just a piece of wood and we learn by failing now here's another one he's got a little more color on him than last time you saw him but I want you to look at the beard notice the all the movement I've got, the flow, it's got a lot of great shadow lines. I did the same thing up here on the hair. He's got a nice profile. And here's another one that's really similar, although his face is completely different. And here again, if you look at it, I'm, I'm still experimenting, trying to get some flow and some movement to the hair. Probably put more hair on this guy than on any carving I've ever done. And I kind of like him. And then everybody seems to like my curly, my little curly guy. I like him. I think he kind of looks like the way I did the top. He kind of looks like a water buffalo. And you'll notice that I'm not quite done with the coloring on him. I'm not real happy with it. But the other thing that I'm experimenting with right now on all these pieces is uh, using some different tinted Danish oils. To try to get it I want to get a more natural look than you might get with uh, with acrylic paints I'm probably going to start messing around with oil paints but I want you to notice on this guy here all the different flow I've got here that I've created you can see it from the front same thing on the top I'm just playing with different ideas and that's the kind of things that we all need to do I'm also uh, in some of the previous carvings I've done. I'm, I've been experimenting with some uh, what is it? briar wax, briar wax, the different flavors and colors of it too. And I'm using these kind of things to get a little bit different look to my carvings, uh, looking for things that uh, accentuate the, the lines of the carving, the hair, the wrinkles, things like that, but still keep it natural. I, I do a lot of that sometimes using acrylic paint but I want to try to come up with a better a better option, a better natural looking solution and that's what I'm working on. So here again, once you learn the basics of carbon, you need to improve, you need to change things. If, if you do my videos or do my tutorials, I'll teach you how to carve a basic face, but you need to take that, experiment with it, uh, add things that you already know or maybe you learn from other carvers, and, and make it your own. You know, do something different. I, long time ago, walked up to a, 
a carving table lady had set up next to me and boy she had some beautiful Indians but I walked up to her and I said you studied with and I'm not gonna say the name and she said yeah how'd you know well it was simple all her carvings looked just like his and I decided that was when I first learned how to carve a face and I decided right then and there that I never wanted somebody to walk up to my table and say you studied with XYZ teacher uh, I decided to to try to come up with my own style and that's what you need to do as you progress as a carver now you can look at my carvings and I'll tell you flat out that you can see the influence of Jeff Fares in my carvings uh, if you know who Jim Wright is you can probably see a little bit of influence there too now those are the two guys that I actually got to go and do a seminar with Although by the time I did that, I already knew most of what I learned there, but I learned some different techniques, different ways of doing things, and that's what seminars are really useful for. Uh, if you're a new carver and you can afford it, I advise you to go to all the seminars that you can. That can really cut the curve on the time it takes to learn how to carve and how to do it efficiently and, and, and make it really look good. Okay, now on another subject, uh, this is a new year and I'm trying to line up teaching opportunities, seminars for this year. I've already got one lined up. I'll be teaching at the Southeastern School of Wood Carving down in Montgomery. Uh, I believe it's in July. There'll be more information about that. But if you belong to a carving club or you've got a group of, of members, you know, five, ten people at a time, and you'd like to have me come and teach a seminar, one of these off-the-corner seminars, I would be more than happy to talk to you about it. Just get in touch with me, and if we can work something out, we'll do it. Um, and along that line, in about a year, and probably two weeks from now, I'm going to retire. And when I do that, then I am going to be doing more videos. I'll have the time to do that. And I also will be looking for more opportunities to come out and do seminars. Now, I realize that some people will never be able to come to a seminar. If you like my style of carving, I've got another idea, opportunity that I'm working on. And what it is, it would be to actually do a seminar or teaching online here. I'm working out the bugs, but... Uh, I believe it's possible, and it, I'll have to come up with, you know, the, the cost. It'll be a, a monthly type cost, or, or maybe we'll have so many hours uh, to do a seminar, say like a simple wood spirit. That's probably what I'd start with, or uh, or one of these uh, green men I do, or one of these uh, wood spirits. And the way it would probably work, this is what I'm working out right now is I would probably do it on Google Plus. You know, I know there's a lot of you carvers out here and a lot of people that come to my site are on Facebook and we're friends there. But they've come out with a new service called Google Plus that's similar to Facebook. But in Google Plus, I can do what they call video hangouts. In other words, I can start up a hangout, turn on my web camera, and up to 10 people or maybe 14, I'm not sure, can come into this Hangout and see what's going on on my webcam, and also I can see them. So for somebody to do this, it would require that you become a member of uh, Google+, Plus, and it would require that you have a video camera, or not a video camera, but a web camera. Web cameras are cheap these days. You can buy a you can buy an HD web camera now for about $35 if you look online. So that shouldn't be too much of an uh, inconvenience. And I have figured out, in fact, this morning I set it up. I've got two web cameras, and I can actually run both of them at the same time. And what I will probably do is set one of them up to shoot my hands, just like I do my videos, so that you would be able to see uh, what I'm doing and you know as I talk and also have another one that would be on my face so it's not too weird when I just try to talk to you and I'm not carving 
uh, and you would be able to come on there and, and you would have your video feed on there and at times when we go through there I, w I would want to see your carbon well you just have to hold it up to the camera and I would be able to see it and that way I could help you out with what you're doing uh, or and critique your piece as we go so anyway this is something that I'm going to work out the bugs on and I'm probably going to do it sometime later this year and it it will probably you know for somebody that can't travel or, or doesn't have the money to travel uh, well this is a this is a way to do this this is a way for if you're interested in learning how to do faces like I do but we may never get together uh, at a seminar well you can come online and do this so I want some feedback from y'all not only about my carbons and and uh, and, and what I'm doing experimentally and what you think about that but also I would like to hear what you your comments uh, about this online video tutorial basically is what it is or online teaching and if you're interested because you know I would need to get oh I don't know anywhere from five to ten people I wouldn't want more than that at one time uh, and if there is an interest out here to do this then I will do it okay now everybody I hope y'all are having a good season so far in carving and I, and I just encourage you to get out there in your shop or in your easy chair or wherever it is you do it get your knives and stuff out and carve something the only way we progress is through repetition and carving you know every time I carve something new I learn something I do I, I learn little things carving is a process it's a lifelong process really we don't get good overnight it takes repetition it takes uh, learning new things it takes learning how to see you know especially in face carving one of the secrets of that is you need to know what a face looks like and I spent hours and hours and hours looking at photographs looking at people uh, looking for things like the angles of the face the lines how it all fits together and, and you need to do that no matter whether you're carving faces or landscape carving or whatever you're doing uh, the more you look at the subject the more you think about what makes it look like it does the better you'll be when you go to carve it so this is Gary McDaniel I'm fixing to sign off and I just want to tell y'all y'all just come carve with us and once again I appreciate your comments Appreciate your emails. Y'all have been really good to me and I appreciate your patience. I know I haven't started my new video yet. It's, it's just a matter of uh, not having the time. But I will try to get it going pretty soon. So this is Gary McDaniel, Three Crosses Wood Carving, signing off. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>